this is a brief presentation on reasoning by first principles with a case study in the construction industry. Um, a first principle is a basic assumption that cannot be deduced any further. While reasoning by analogy is to review what everybody else does and then follow the herd. A lot of folks reason by analogy and then wonder why they didn't get positive results, uh, even though they followed exactly what others had done. So it doesn't mean, you know, reasoning by analogy doesn't necessarily lead to success. Reasoning on, by first principles, the way this works is you have to first identify and define your current assumptions. You then have to break down the problem into its fundamental principles. And then you've got to create new solutions from scratch for each layer of the problem. That's how this approach works. Now, if you reason by first principles, you can identify 10x opportunities versus maybe 10% improvements on any technology or problem when you reason by analogy. So that's the opportunity there. Now, we're going to focus on a case study here. And the case study is in the construction uh, technology space. So this is a residential building that Glacis has built. And uh, on the left is the rendering, uh, the, the architect rendering, and the right is an actual picture from the site. We're just about to hand over this building to our customers. And then this is our office building that we've already occupied. And this office building, again, what's interesting is uh, it's fully insulated for central air conditioning with R20 heat insulation. The facade there is solar panels. Um, only the space where you have to enjoy the view is glass. Everything else is solar panels. And all the slabs of every floor are, are concrete slabs, uh, which sandwich styrofoam panels. And we're gonna to touch on how this technology works. This is just an elevation of this building that we've already occupied. And, and this building is gonna have a twin building adjacent to it, and that's what the rendering is of how it will look with the second building completed as well. Now, um, the, this technology, the heart and soul of it is uh, using uh, insulation material like styrofoam. That's a four inch styrofoam panel, uh, 10 foot tall. This is how we tested it all out. When we developed the technology, uh, we've got a weld mesh on either side of that styrofoam panel. We then apply cement plaster, so cement plaster is rendered on both sides of the styrofoam to create the partition walls. And this is a test to see if we can use this technology for the partition walls. And once we did that, the finished wall looks like just an, any other brick wall, but it's actually 80% lower in weight and it's got uh, R20 insulation built in now because of the styrofoam sandwiched in between it. So the next thought is how strong is this wall? Uh, so we tested it out, right? So if you put in a single screw, we were looking at all the load factors that we could bear on a wall like this, and we got very good results, as you can see. And what else would you do on a wall? You would want to screw something to the wall, and we just tested out the load bearing capacity of the wall, even for that use case, and we got very good results again. Um, and with that, we actually started using this technology for the partition walls in our building. So all the partition walls are actually built using this technology, and we got very good results in terms of the heat insulation and the energy efficiency gains driven by this. Uh, what we did next was when we saw the strength of this wall, we said, what would happen if we used a similar technology even for the slab? So we, when we thought about that, we just put the wall horizontally and tested it out. Uh, I actually drove my car on top of it, and what we realized is that that slab is very, very strong, right? Uh, you, there's no way you can lay a brick wall horizontally like that, but the wall that we had created with styrofoam uh, seemed to be extremely strong. So we then uh, had to test it out in more detail. So we actually put up a structure, and we built the styrofoam slab on, as the roof. Uh, no steel rebar here, it's just the welded mesh. Um, and then once this was completed, we got very good results again. That's a five ton or 5,000 liter water tank on top of the roof of that structure. It's a three and a half meter span. Um, the structural engineers then mentioned that, hey, maybe the span is not wide enough at three and a half meters. So we built another structure with a seven meter span this time and got the same positive results. Uh, no deflection of the slab 
and very good parameters when we tested the slab out. Uh, with that, we, we had to pass the building code as well, and I will explain how we managed to do that. But we actually cleared this technology to be used for our construction. And uh, this is actually the pictures from our construction of the office building that you saw earlier. It's styrofoam uh, panels there, as you can see. That's the welded mesh in place. And um, this is how it was actually finished. Once the concrete was poured, this is the final structure of the building. This is a uh, ground plus five and a basement, so a total of seven stories, this building, and it's 50,000 square feet. And um, this is the finished building with the solar panel facade. The cost was $25 a square foot here in India, 70% uh, lower weight compared to the traditionally constructed building, and an extremely high seismic res uh, resistance uh, capability as well uh, because of this technology. So that was the result. And uh, this is the interior of the building that we completed and occupied. Uh, so you can see it's, uh, it's a great uh, look and feel. And it's centrally air conditioned with very high energy efficiency as well. Uh, to meet the building code, uh, we were able to map it to the code related to a waffle slab. And a waffle slab has uh, existed for quite a while. And there are existing building codes for this type of technology. So we could adapt the same code for our building where the hollow spaces were filled in with styrofoam. So that's what allowed us to meet the building code. Uh, the key benefits of the technology are exponential, as you can see here. And uh, we got very good results. All of this simply by applying that concept of reasoning by first principles. Thank you.